Welcome back, Cloud Crusaders. This is Michael Forrester here to talk about the January 2024 edition of Keeping Up with AWS, brought to you by Code Cloud. If you're obsessed with cloud computing as much as we are, you're in the right place. So before we dive into this month's AWS extravaganza, do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe. Let's make this the most cloud-tastic year yet. First up. I want you to know that we're going to talk a little bit about CloudWatch because they've leveled up with the network monitor. Yes, you heard it right. You can now keep tabs on your on-premise network health from AWS's perspective. And guess what? You do not need any manual instrumentation. So we're going to talk about this in a second. I'm definitely going to be setting this up in my personal account. We're also going to talk about scaling CDK adoption inside your organization. You're probably aware that platform engineering is the new buzz in DevOps. And so we've got some killer strategies and some practices to speed up your CDK adoption in your organization. So stay tuned for that as we go through that link. We're also going to unravel the mysteries of Kate's observability. We're gonna talk a little bit about EPBF on Kate's, especially EKS. And if you're not into Kate's monitoring, this is a game changer for observability. So if you know, you're not familiar with EPBF or you haven't heard about it, it's probably one of the kind of big new major things that has happened in relation to Kubernetes. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about ECS and how it's bringing something new to the table with instance training. You can now gracefully shut down your workloads on ECS and reschedule them seamlessly across your cluster. I know this seems like a minor thing, but ECS hasn't had it, oddly enough. For those of you who are AI enthusiasts, we've got a hands-on project with some generative AI, namely Bedrock and Lambda. So you can link Bedrock and Lambda together to get the latest you know, news feed. It's a great hands-on project, especially if you haven't done anything with Bedrock yet. And there's more. ECS now supports automatic traffic encryption via TLS, right? So you can now secure your network traffic effortlessly with ECS Service Connect, kind of nice. And finally, you don't want to miss out on the EKS SaaS Flux GitOps project. Yes, the EKS SaaS Flux GitOps project. It's basically a, a sample pattern or repo for managing multi-tenancy Kubernetes using GitOps with Flux. It's a game changer, right? And don't forget, we have all of our sources in our slides, so we're going to take an in-depth look at each topic. Links are in the description below. So if you're gonna keep up with AWS and stay ahead of the cloud, let's go ahead and dive in. Let's talk first about that. CloudWatch now has a network monitor. Okay, so I, I know this is gonna sound weird, but now you can actually, with very little instrumentation and certainly no manual instrumentation, you can turn on a checkbox and basically get the speed and uptime, right? Uh, you know, uh, uptime, whether it's up or down for your connectivity back to your on-premise network, right? I'm definitely gonna be setting this up in my personal account. But this is great because now you can see all those point-to-point -point connections that you have with all the companies and the sites and everything back to AWS. With minimal instrumentation, you can now actually see the health and status of those connections. Love that. Number two, let's say that you are an all-in AWS shop and maybe you're not using Terraform that much. Maybe you are, right? Um, but you're looking at things like the CDK because you have a bunch of very strong developer-enabled DevOps engineers and they love Python or whatever their language is, but let's say Python. And they are more and more wanting to kind of avoid the pitfalls that, that Terraform has in terms of like reusability and other aspects that you don't have when you use it in code. And so you're looking at the CDK because this allows you to write in code your favorite kind of infrastructure definitions, right? And so how do you scale any tool adoption inside of an organization? So this one, number two, is actually about the CDK, but it actually can be applied to any tool adoption within an organization. So a worthy read, because if you're in DevOps and you're in this whole cloud, cloud native space with you know, Kubernetes and containerization, whatever, you know that people are the challenge and people are the solution. So learning how to, to implement tooling and adoption and winning hearts and minds for these things inside of an organization is incredibly valuable. Number three, ADPF, right? So, you know, basically instrumented observability calls inside of the Linux kernel, right? That allows you to see all kinds of interesting things happening from observability, observability standpoint within a host and node across the network, across the system, et cetera, et cetera. So EPPF, by the way, is super hot. If you don't know what it is, this is a great article, even if you don't monitor anything in, in, in Kate's, to really understand how this d deep level of observability changes the game when it comes to understanding what's going on across your entire ecosystem. So take a look at this article. This does actually hook into EKS, which of course, you know, since it's keeping up with AWS, we're fans of. But take a look at this if you've never 
red like you, you never have worked with eppf it's totally worth checking out this is gonna get, like blow your mind number four you might say michael why do we have yet another istio article well here's the thing so if you're running eks and most of us are running managed you know kubernetes right so i mean like we're you know we're, we're doing that we're not most of us aren't necessarily running vanilla kubernetes in our own data centers we're using a provider of some type and we're probably using a hyperscale provider so knowing how Istio fits into this ecosystem with EKS is incredibly valuable. So this is a hands-on deep dive, provides essential reading and some exposure to running Istio on EKS that's even deeper than what you would experience, say, in like the EKS workshop, right? So totally worth kind of rubbing your face on, doing a little failure in, experimenting with, because most of us are going to be running service message, uh, service meshes in our environment. Particularly if we want mutual TLS, if we want, you know, metering, rate limiting, caching, that kind of thing, right? Circuit breakers, you know, we're going to be looking at some kind of mesh overlay. Number five, and I'm going to pair number five actually with number seven. So you would think that ECS now supports, would have already supported instance training, but it didn't actually because, right? I think, you know, ECS was AWS's answer to Kubernetes before Kubernetes kind of won the orchestration wars because ECS came out, I want to say about a year, maybe in 2017. I think EKS came out in 2018. If memory serves, I could be completely wrong about that. But I, I remember ECS coming out beforehand. And, you know, we assume, for example, it supports instance training and, you know, end-to-end -end encryption, things that EKS does support are automatically. Turns out that ECS doesn't. So both with five and seven, you know, there's significant announcements about enhancing kind of like ECS's kind of like capabilities in some form or fashion. Whether it's number five, which is a graceful shutdown, when, it, when a node or an instance goes down, if you're using managed nodes, or if you just want to auto automate traffic, if you're using like a service, right, to go to multiple tasks in ECS. So five and seven are relatively significant feature enhancements for ECS. Now, number six is interesting because this is a hands-on repo, basically, for linking Bedrock and Lambda together. Now, if you're not familiar with Bedrock, even though we're not, we're all DevOps engineers, we're not necessarily in the AI space, Bedrock allows you to run different kinds of foundational AI models, like generative AI models. And it like does it at scale, does it very easily. It's very seamless. It's awesome, right? So if you haven't done it, you haven't done it with Lambda, please put your hands on that repo. It'll take you an hour to mess with it and it's gonna to be totally worth it. In this particular case, it uh, basically gets an RSS of news feeds and does like a summarization. Take a look at it, it's worth it. Last but not least is that there's this EKS SAS flux, flux get up project. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, this is a glorious repo of kind of a sample pattern to manage multi-tenancy in a Kate's cluster, but you've got flux doing get ops, right? Absolutely fabulous automated cloud formation template that sets it up, right? And it allows you to kind of like tinker with the practices. I say, get in there and do it. Okay. As always, we've got week one, week two, week three. We've got the different pieces, you know, at hand for you to see, so you can actually see the different sources. And you know, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you want us to focus in on something, please, you know, let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you at the February updates for AWS. All right, take care.